each one of you who's just tuned in just to be in the presence of the mighty God I know for someone feel somebody who is feeling sick that something has happened this morning your healing your breakthrough oh yes your depression is going this morning I just want to thank God for your life you know it's not a coincidence that you're tuned in this morning I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus what a blessed Sunday we have this morning to come together in the presence of the mighty God. Just greet somebody you're sitting and say, we thank God for the man of God who's been chosen to stand in such a time as this. It's not an easy journey we are all walking. It's not an easy life that we are in right now. But there's something we find in the word of God. We come, when we come together, we are stronger together than we are apart. So I just want to thank God for your life this morning that you are here for a reason. As we are all going straight into the word of God. It's something that, you know what, I cannot avoid just encouraging somebody. It might not be for you this morning or for anybody, but I know. I'm just visiting someone to this morning. I'm on somebody who is instead where he's saying, Pastor John, I don't know what my next move is. Right now, I've tried everything, I've pressed every button, but it seems like it's they're all sticking. Yes, life has come to a point where it's sticking. It's you are stuck, I am stuck, someone is stuck. But there's something, let me tell you, every time there is where you find yourself stuck, there's always an antidote. The antidote, we find it from the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The world is rushing right now to look to find a vaccine which is an antidote to what has gone wrong to the pandemic. Everyone is looking for a solution, for an answer. For us as Christians, what else can we do outside the secular world? We can only come back to the word of God. To me, it has been an antidote. Whether on my deathbed, it still was my antidote. Whenever, wherever I'm under deep, whenever I go through stuff, I know where my antidote is. So I want you to just connect with me, just to be you know, receptive. Don't resist. It could be your one moment. Do you know it's quite really touching because the amount of people and phone calls, the things I'm going around, going to actually address in people's home, depression, suicidals, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's quite frust you know, I mean, fascinate, fascinating that this is what is so real. Let alone when we first we are listening to the news. When our government are telling us now we are going into this, things are not going better, they are going to be blah. You know, it's really quite depressing. We can't run away from reality. It's so real. But there is a God who is so real in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of your journey, in the midst of your life where you are saying, why? I'm telling you, I'm coming out of this one and there's another one. I thought we were coming out, we are going to have our normal life and we are hearing all these negativities. Then what do you do as a child of God who is washed by the blood of Jesus, who has been bought by the blood? What do you do in the midst of all that is happening right now? Let us go straight in the word of God. But before I do that, let me just pray for somebody who feels like I don't take nothing no more. Pastor Jonah can't take nothing, but let me take you. Please, it's time just to be receptive. Just accept what it is and let God be God in this season. So let me pray for you right now. If you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling disenfranchised and you feel like what else, what's next? But let me tell you, there's a God who is in heaven watching over you. He has spoken already your destiny. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters who are right now 
at the sound of my voice. Father, right now, wherever they are participating in this service this morning, I might find them right now, Lord, Father, feeling broken and feeling hurt. But Lord, you are God who is locating them right now this morning. I pray that Holy Spirit, you touch each and every family. Father, every family, every marriage, every ch child who is going through, anyone who is in depression this morning, that you touch them. There are some we cannot reach, but Holy Spirit, you are not limited into locating where they are right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Oh, let everyone say amen. You are looking beautiful. I don't I don't mind you. For those who are watching from you're still having on your pajama, don't worry. Still, Pastor John still love you. But it took me the whole morning to prepare myself. I thank God for that. We are still having service. We are not letting the devil play us mind game. We are having service. We are in the building right now. It's only location has changed, but we are having church. Hallelujah. It's even getting better by the day. Just how it's getting better. Hallelujah. It's getting better by the day. In Jesus mighty name let us go and see what the word of God say while we are in this situation in this moment I find that there is something we've always what you are going through the book of Ecclesiastes says whatever you are seeing under the earth is never been new there's nothing new happening under the earth Hallelujah. So this is one thing to tell you that don't be surprised. Somebody walked and they came out. Hallelujah. So why have I to bring this title today? You know what? Speaking the promises of God. Hallelujah. Friday we had this thing. We had our, our session on Friday when we said praise can do wonders when you get into praise. But the Holy Spirit said, no, you cannot just stay there on praise. I want to give them and say, you know what, when you speak the promises of God, especially when you don't have no any other kind of a prayer. I told you, I said last Friday, it's when you praise and worship. You know what? Praise and worship is another way to pray and to speak to God. And when you give him his reverence and his position, you create and do wonders. You make a way. He make in perfect way. So this morning, I've got something to tell somebody. We are going to see what we can do when we get stuck, when life takes us to another corner. When when we cannot pray no more, I can only go back and look and get into the promises of God. What did God say? What does the Bible say? Please, I tell you, I've got just a few pointers. I'm not taking much of your time. But I'm going just to give you this message to know that you can speak the promises of God. Hallelujah, the promises. What has he promised? That's why he said you pray to the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. No, because he said, as I promised your forefathers, so you are still in the lineage of the pros, you know, of the promises. It has never stopped because it came through Jesus to this day. Now we can claim them in the name of Jesus. We can speak them in the name of Jesus. You don't speak them in your name. You speak them in the name of Jesus. I claim my promises. You said I shall be this. And what I am is not what I'm supposed to be, but I know I'm not supposed to be where I am because your promises say, your words say, hallelujah. I know I'm addressing somebody. We have run out of words. We have run out of prayer session. We have run out of everything. You have given, you have, you know, done everything. You have thrown all the kind of thing. But let me tell you, go and remind God of his word. My goodness. Can you not take God for his word and say, take God. You know, you say this, if these things are going this way, so what does your word say? Get Take God into account. Take his word against him and say, God, you said, you said, you said, you said. When you go to somebody who promised you something, all of us, we are in our confinement where each one of us, whether you are lovers or you are a family, there are so many times our kids have come to remind us, Dad, you said so. You said, and you are really, you know what, caught up with your words. And please, let's, let us make God eat his words. I'm telling you, let us take God for his word and say, God, you must eat your words because you spoke if this is not my portion because you said so. So it's your time. I'm taking this word back to you. That's why you say in Isaiah chapter number 55, he said, you know what? The word of the Lord is like snow. He comes here on earth. He doesn't go back again or like rain. Hallelujah. When the rain comes, doesn't go back. What we can only say is the manifestation. So it's the word of God. It will never go back to him void. 
need. Hallelujah. That means it will perform what it contains you. Hallelujah. So let's go straight into the word of God, speaking the promises of God or praying the promises of God. Let us go straight away into the word. Let's go to our first prayer, our first session, our prayer promises we find it from the book of uh, jeremiah chapter number 29 verse number 11 to 13 i want you to capture this very clearly because this is your antidote against whatever is going on in the world today hallelujah we find i put this one one point i said when your hope is fade away what do you do in the midst when your hope is fading away when your prospects are fading away when your plans look like they are diminishing by the day Hallelujah. When your vision seems like going blade. Hallelujah. Like everything is disinfragmenting by that day. And you're like, what is next over my life? But there is something I love. Because every time you are, your thing is fading away. Everything is fading away. Let us go. He says, verse number 11 of Jeremiah 29. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace, hallelujah, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you the future and the hope. Then you will call upon me and God and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. This is only one scripture I can finish on the whole sermon. But I've got a couple of them to give you as references. This summarizes your life. Because this is what he's saying. He said, I know the thoughts. So you are going to God and say, you said you know the thoughts upon my life. What you have the plans in other, in other versions. For I know the plans I have. For some of you, your plans were actually all disinfragmented this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are actually participating from. But he's saying, for I know the plan that I have for you. The plans that I have for you. That means God has a final plan for your life, not the enemy. Because he said towards you to say the thought of peace. You see, the moment you are in right now where you are like, my mind is wrestling. What is happening today, I'm telling you, people are not at peace. I am telling you, like, especially in this time, people are not at peace at all. At all. You know someone in your family. You know someone around you. You know somebody is running and saying, my mind is turning, I'm not sleeping. I'm having sleep. It's, it doesn't care. Do you, let me tell you, it's not even caring whether you, how young or how old you are. Because right now, I'm dealing with some 16-year-olds, some 12-year-olds, some 20 year -olds. You are saying, I'm under depression. How can a young person who is saying, I'm under depression at such kind of tender age? Because the enemy, what is done into our generation is to plant a seed of hopelessness because what we have seen around us because of the information we have gathered the information we are hearing and what is happening which we cannot avoid but let me tell you God has a final say God has a plan and a purpose for your life in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah I want somebody to know because some of us we are just about to give up and say you know what? I've done everything so what else I just throw the towels and leave it and just leave and how but let me tell you the word of god is real i know the thoughts i have for you peace not of evil so if you see evil it's not from god some of us we say ah and god has caused the evil to come to me and whatever no god doesn't plan evil for you hallelujah the evil will always appear only to come and test you to know where you are because god doesn't do evil things god is not an evil god so don't ever say god you are evil no there's something wrong with me when i start to say god you are evil because you know what we don't know who the nature of our god is but when we know the nature of god you say i am your god a god who wants peace not evil he refused he refused he said not evil Hallelujah. 
but to give you the future. So if you see your future as bled as anything, that's not God. Please go back and say, no, I'll read my text again and take my spectacles and read my reading glasses to see how the text says. He said, no, I'm not doing any evil over you. I'm not giving you that bad future. It's not my plan, but the enemy is trying by all means. But one thing I'm going to tell you to this morning, somebody is getting their way out. Hallelujah. You know what? Hope, when hope, I'll give you unexpected hope. So your hope doesn't fail. Keep hoping because you know what? You know, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, faith is, I love it because when you about faith is hoping for the things that you can only imagine and then they become real as we, as you believe. Because hope doesn't fail as Corinthians says in the, when Paul speaks to the Corinthians, hope doesn't fail anybody. Keep hoping because you know God said, I'll give you your expected future and hope in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he emphasized it. The only thing you need to do keep calling upon me hallelujah keep calling god don't call your problem he said keep calling he's telling us in our promises that keep calling me i am a god who answers prayer this is what he's saying because i said i will listen People are saying God doesn't listen. No, he listens. But what are we calling? Most of us, we call upon our problem. Good morning. How are you doing, madam? Ah, you know what? My problem. No, you don't shout problem. You don't shout circumstances. Hallelujah. We need to know who we are and who we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he is our hope of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is what we are this, this morning. He said, when you search me with all your heart, we are in this generation. We are so good in the Google search engine. Google search engine or whether you use Alexia or you use Siri or whichever kind of the search engine you use. There's something I'm telling you. They are not an answer to your solution. Most of us, we have too many option, options that we are using to search God. He's not on a Google search engine. Hallelujah. Let me tell somebody this morning, God is not found in the Google search engine. He's found on your knees. Hallelujah. He's found in, your, in the presence presence of God in the Holy Spirit. He says, it's only the spirit that can search the mind of God. Hallelujah. So you can't have the mind of God when you're going through Google search engine. You cannot, not Alexia. You can call Alexia until your lips get ready. I am telling you, you can't find an answer. But the, our answer is in searching God. The word search, when you go and do your own study, as the school of thought says, it takes painstaking of trying to search and look around at all costs. Some of us, we search only to second the next thing i can't find the result and then you sit home and you cry take tissues and everything start wiping oh yeah i tried my level best please hang on a minute searching is something very unconditional you can't give any condition to your search engine because you know what when you are in god you are ever searching the goodness of the lord because they are infinity they are everlasting they are plenty you can't search enough of god hallelujah so the more you search him the more he reveals to himself to you my goodness this is too good oh this is too good you know when you search for those who do who are doing school and everything you are doing your dissertation you are doing your play whatever there's something before you graduate when you are doing your everything that you do you do searches do you go on the internet do thorough searches and say can you do us this and that this and the next thing he said i passed my dissertation was it in there or you searched you searched into somebody who has already presented you know where it started so you go where it started and then you find the solution we go back to creation to know who our God is, who is the God, the Elohim God, who the creator of the heaven and the earth. Hallelujah. This is where we find our search. Our search is not in our situation. It's not even in our every, our daily dudes. It's in the Lord. Hallelujah. Search me. Who are you searching this morning? Let's go. Number two. When doubts. Hallelujah. Not number two. When doubt hits home. Uh, how many times you try this, you've been everywhere, and the next thing you find yourself, will it work? Ah, they prayed for me. 
I don't think it will ever work. I had this issue for too long. Ah, never. Is God real? Mm, yeah, they say call upon the name of the Lord. But is he, can he do this situation? Can he deal with it? But this is one thing. I'm coming with this text. When doubts hit home, that's point number two. Psalms 103. It says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all the benefits. Who forgive all sins and heals all diseases. Who redeems you from the pit and the crown. And, and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desire with good things so that you may... You, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. God, let me tell you, this is one thing all of us have seen it in so many Christian walks. Where people, they've seen God. But the next thing when another issue rises, they're doubting God again. But only just, this is why David, he did try and bring it back to the church of God. He said, you Israelites, you have gone through the Red Sea. You walked in a dry pathway, dust and in the Mideast. You have crossed the Red Sea. You have crossed Jordan. You have seen the walls of Jericho falling down. You have seen God feeding you with manna. And the next thing you are asking the credibility of God. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. I'm reminding somebody this morning. That's why I said, let's speak the promises. Because here, David is making nice and clear that, you know what? Yes, stuff can hit home. Yes, it does hit home. But let me tell you, child of God, don't forget that the oxygen you are breathing at this particular moment, he didn't pay for it. You're not even paying rent into that, you know, oxygen inside of you. Any minute it can go, phew, you are out. The next thing we are seeing another carcass over there. Hallelujah. We only see a carcass. Hallelujah. Let us not forget. This is one thing David is reminding us. Forget not. We are a generation that is very forgetful. Very forgetful. Oh, complaining. Oh, my goodness. Only the day you went away without a pound in your pocket and say, oh, well, I'm as broke as a bone. No, 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 please. Yesterday, you had ice cream on your mouth. And the next thing, you can't even appreciate for your yesterday. Child of God, it's time for you right now to get back and say, God, I thank you. I don't have to forget the promises, the things that you have done for me. Please go back and look into what he has done for you before you start complaining. Because God still has a lot in store for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Makaya Bosikaya. Oh yes. I love this. God has invested in you. Well-being and working towards your renewed wholeness. This is one thing. Some people look at your health. He said only when you are somebody who doesn't forget. And continue to search God. He said I will renew your heart as a youth. And give you your well-being, your healing comes into your positiveness in the mighty name of Jesus, into being appreciative. Hallelujah. Healing comes when you appreciate God for life because you just say, God, I thank you for my life. Then pain will fade away. But the minute you say, where are you, God, I'm in pain. Then the next thing God is saying, so otherwise, if you he, if he would have died, you would have died yesterday. You are still on there as much as pain is still. But let me tell you, that hell, that means someone is searching for it. There's someone right now sitting, lying in the mortuary. Right now, their eyes closed. They can't open. They wish they can only come, whether with one leg or with uh, no eyes. They say, as long as I've got life. So we have every reason to be so thankful. Hallelujah. So we find here that God, oh yes, he has a bigger dream for our lives. And beckons us to follow him. Hallelujah to follow. Obedience often requires faith and risk. But God would delight in your dependence on him. Always be there to support you. Hallelujah. Obedience. 
These are the ingredients of understanding when you're standing in the promises of God. You are continually being obedient, knowing that my dependent is not on, on me, not on my mama and my dad, not on my paycheck, not on my salary, or not on my job, not on my intellectual. No, I have to depend upon God. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. I need to continue to be obedient to his word, reading of the word, studying, and being so thankful and not forgetting getting that he is still God sitting upon the throne in Jesus mighty name number three when you are feeling weak ah I can't see you these days to church ah these days I'm so weak I don't feel like praying it has been a long time since I've been praying I'm weak these days it has become one of our songs of the day men and women of God we can't see them on fire pastors ministers Worshippers, we can't see them on fire. They were on fire before the pandemic. When the pandemic hit home, they can't find no firepower. They can't find any seal of worship. They can't find any energy to go on their knees. Because they've come to a point where they are questioning, where are you, God? I'm feeling weak. I can't pray no more. I can't fast no more. I can't give to God. Oh, God, where are you? I'm ever broke. Why do I need to give? Ah, oh, come on, child of God. He said, when you're feeling weak and beat up, <laughs> ah, those moments are there when you feel beat up, weak and beat up. But this morning, I've got a message in your weakest moment. Let's see what the Bible say when you're feeling weak. Yes, some people, I know, most of us as people, we always say, ah, I'm a man of flesh. This is what we've come up with as an excuse in our walk with God. When we find ourselves on a wrong destination. Have you ever been sitting on a wrong bus stop? Thinking sitting on a bus stop is a destination. I've seen so many people who have rested and make tents on their bus stops. But let me tell you. Yes, you are feeling weak. Uh, so, if you are facing an uphill battle, repeat this verse. I want you to do this to yourself. To yourself. Hallelujah. Frequently. And it's so important. Please, repetition. Repeatedly doing something, you will come up with something that is quite tangible. Let me tell you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it, oh, why are you doing like a repeat record? No, I'm trying to make sure that I recite on it until it manifests. Hallelujah. Yeah, I don't care. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, until Jesus comes down. I'm not going to stop praying. I'm not going to stop singing the same song like a jammed record. No, I'm going to say it. So that's what I'm saying to you. You can say this. Philippians chapter number 4 verse number 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Let it be your soul. I can do it. Get an I can do attitude. I can do it. I can make it. Yes, I'm going to graduate. Yes, my marriage is going to work out. My relationship is going to be okay. I know my health is going to be okay. I can. I can. I can. Hallelujah. When you get into I can, I am telling you the manifestation will start to happen because power of confession of the word of God. Revelation chapter number 12 verse number 11 says, They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of their mouth. That means your mouth is the power. What are you saying? What are you confessing? What are you confessing this morning? Are you on the promises of God or are you in your failure? Are you in the promises of God or are you in your depression? You are on your anxiety. Hallelujah. The suicide thought must go. You can do it. You can make it to the other side in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. What else? God will, God will never call you to a place where he will leave you unattended. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's very good for those who do tweets. Huh? He said, God will never call you to a place and leave you unattended. Oh, I love it. I'm loving it every minute because where I am right now, I am telling you, this is why we find in the book of Daniel chapter number 3, when we find the three Hebrew boys, um, let us be real, they are right in a hundred degree furnace, right? 
when they are being cooked. But God said, I didn't let you guys go into that one. I would have protected you. But he said, I, know, I let you go in. Then I can attend you in the fire. <laughs> I love it. Just allow the situation to be the real situation. Because God is coming into that in your attention. He's bringing his attention into your life. In the name of Jesus. Can you beat up yourself and say, wow, Pastor John, I feel it right now. It's getting right now from my nerve. I can feel it from my nerve. I feel it flowing through my blood. In the name of Jesus. This morning, talking to somebody. This is your moment. And the fourth man appeared to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abid, Nigo. So God will never throw you where he doesn't have no attention. He wants to attend you in your situation. Hallelujah. That's why he always say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. As he says in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, yes, yes, you are weary. Yes, you are weak and beat up. Let's see what he says. Hallelujah. Be assured that God, who has numbered, this is one thing in Psalms number 5, verse number 12. My goodness. <laughs> I love it. Imagine Psalms number 5, verse number 12. It says, right? It says, I love it. Be assured that God who has numbered the hair on your head is fighting for you. His favor will surround you like a shield. My goodness. I know you do makeups, hairdos. For me, anyway, you can't count it because it's all bold. Thank God for being bold. It's okay. But he, he said, if he's a God who can care for the hair, for your hair, he knows the number of your hair. Come on, guys. That's the last thing you can ever think of. Every time you're combing your hair, I'm already telling my wife, I said, come on, please. I can only see hair everywhere in this house. But God is saying, I'm feeling it. That is falling on the carpet. Oh, our hoovers is sucked. It's enough hair. But still, God is still considering every foreign hair. In the name of Jesus. What about you? How much is he so caring about you? He said, I shall protect you with my shield. I shall be your shield. Psalms chapter number 91. He's my refuge. And he's my butler. He's my shield. Hallelujah. In him you have everything. This morning, talking to somebody. He knows the number of your hair. That's how much he cares about you. In Jesus' mighty name. You have an, an you know what? Unsummatable ally of who God. For God is for you. Who can be against you? Romans chapter number 8, 30, 31. Hallelujah. If God is for you. That means when you are walking in the fire and say, If God is before me. Who can be against me? I know we're coming to a point in this life where I'm telling you, you can only survive with the word of God. Child of God, it can only be the word of God. I am telling you, our hope is finished. We've been lied to, to so many people come and promise us so many things and they are broken. Politicians come in different ways. I shall do it when you vote me, when you do me this, even in church. Pastors have promised us so many. Ah, our husbands, our children and everything. But when you are in God, ah, makaya boshi karabosakaya, he never lies. He never lies. Oh, some people told you, oh yes, in darkness, in sickness, I shall be with you. Come on, now I'm sick. You don't wanna look at me. Hallelujah. Yeah, you kissed me very well on the day of that when everyone was watching. Now we are on our private house. You don't even want to look at my face. Now I'm sick. Oh, hallelujah. Those roses, those flowers never come. They came only when you were trying to just try to do your own tactics. But it's no more there. But let me tell you, he's a God. What he promised will remain. Hallelujah. That's why you go to the book of Numbers, chapter number 23, verse number 19 and 20. He says, I am a God. I am not man that I should lie, neither son of man that I should repent. What I've said, verse number 20, he said, what I have said, I will never reverse it. That means when God said, I'm going to bless you, he's not going to reverse it. Hallelujah, God doesn't lie. Hallelujah. Man, he said, call man a liar, and God be God. Hallelujah. Please never turn back from God, from Jesus, the Savior. The master that's all you need right now in the midst of your house 
in the midst of your life. Speak the word of God. Speak the promises of God. Hallelujah. Let us continue to go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you boldly claim this truth with expectation, you will give God the, the space, the invitation to show his glory. Hallelujah. If God be for me, who can be? Then that means you're saying you are doing it. He said, when you boldly claim, we claim the word, our promises, then what you are doing, you are giving God a space and an invitation. Hallelujah. Oh, that's too powerful. You are giving God a space and an invitation. When you say, if God is for me, who can be against me? That means you are calling him bouncer. Monia. Hallelujah. He becomes a big monia. Hallelujah. You know, when you're saying, if God is for me, devil will like, what's God is talking about? And the Lord will appear. Your own monia will appear. God is saying, I'm bringing it. Because you are giving me all the praise, all the glory. You know because your dependence is upon me. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Number four. When you are under attack. What do you do when you are under attack? Because I'm, please, it's good to play this again after this service. So that you write down every nitty gritties and put them on your headboard, on your fridge. Hallelujah. I'm telling somebody who's going to do it. I know you are starting already working on it. Because these are the pointers, which are the navigation that we are going to be using. It's a sat nav to the real world. Because we are coming to a time when you are feel attacked. Oh, I hear the call. Ah, oh, pastor, I had an attack last night. <laughs> these are all these are often calls that I find whether you're attacked in dreams or physically out there oh pastor I didn't attack but what do you do when you are under attack let us go to the word of God Jeremiah chapter number 54 verse number 17 says no weapon formed against you shall prosper in every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn Hallelujah. This is the inheritance of the servant of, of the Lord. And, and, their, and their righteous is from me, says the Lord. Listen to this. There's something very profound in this text. Because he's saying, when you are under attack, tell the devil no weapons. From the against you shall prosper. They will never prosper. Yes, they will never pro kill you. They will never do nothing. They will try throwing them. You can see them. Hallelujah. But they will never manifest. They will never come to flourishing in Jesus' mighty name. Then one thing he says, every tongue which rises against you in judgment. Hallelujah. Some of you, you are looking very miserable because they, they said something. Their tongue has pierced your heart. You said they broke my heart. What broke your heart? Did they throw something and broke your heart? It, there were words that were spoken. They were, someone's tongue became a vile. It became venomous. I know we have got people who have got venomous tongues. When they spit, they spit poison. And it is gathered right here. And you are feeling like, my goodness, you shall not be married. You look very ugly. You have failed long enough. You cannot even come out. Look at you, miserable somebody. And these words, they become like a judgment city. My goodness, I'm talking to somebody. Ah, look at you. You failed that one. You failed this. What else can come out of you? Some of you are still trying to erase those words. But the Lord said, hey, 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 you shall condemn. God said, I sh he, st he didn't say he shall condemn. He said, you shall condemn. You have the power. Speak. Speak it. I'm not what you are saying I am. When you've got headache, you say, no, I'm healthy. When you've got this, say, ah, ah, I'm not what you are saying I am. I'm not what the feelings of my body are. Because right now we have got a generation. I am feeling depressed. I am feeling very low. Please, what is that little thing that you talk about? Why are you low? Come up in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come up, child of God. Because whatever you are crying for, if you don't come out of it, it will take you down. Definitely we will come and do your funeral. I'm very good. I'm no problem with coming in. It doesn't matter you are from my church, wherever. I'm very good in laying people to rest. Never mind. But please, don't let that thing kill you. Don't let those words kill you. 
Say, go away. I don't care. He said, you shall, you shall be parried. He said, I shall have multiple children. He said, you shall not be married. Uh, I wish we could have multi-million marriages and stuff, but never mind. He said, I'll continue to hang on in my marriage, in my relation. I continue to love my children. Hallelujah. People say, you are a failure. You are a failure, your mother. You are a failure. They say, no, I will correct myself. Yes, I might have done some stupid decision, some stupid things. Hallelujah. Some dumb decision, but I'll make it in the name of Jesus. Don't let their words trample you. Oh, you never go to school. You, you are dumb. No, just tell them, you know what? I'll, if it's going to take me to go and to do R-A-E-O-U, I'll go back and do R-A-E-O-U until I qualify in the name of Jesus. Anyone who tells you you can't make it, just say, you know what? I am not going to be limited by your little words, by your little tongue. I will be what God said I am. Hallelujah. I'm talking to the world today. Wherever, because this is our season. Ah, what do we do when we are in fear? Fear. Ah, please, let me much be disciplined. I just feel like, number four, when you are under fear, when the fear comes, let us go. Fear, do you know, fear is a demon. Fear, mwea china. Hallelujah. In my language, Muyawe China is the spirit. It's an evil spirit. This thing that we call fear, because I've seen it disabling people in life forever. Some people say, I'm afraid to go out. They're even afraid to go out. Just afraid to go out. About all this happening. They are sleeping 24-7 because of fear. What are you afraid of? Let's go. The book of Second Timothy. Chapter number 1, verse number 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear. He said, a spirit, a spirit. God has not given you a spirit of fear, right? But of power. Oh, power. Can you shout power? Because the minute you shout, can you just shout power? He said, I've given the spirit of power. Power. And of love. The spirit of power and the spirit of love and the sound mind. You know when you get the spirit of power, you know how to do what you do, how, when to do. You have the power to control certain things. How you speak, how you do things. How you articulate your day, how you start and end your day. You're not being controlled because you've got the power to control. Then when it says love, everything you do is full of love. No grudge, no envy, no strife. Hallelujah. You are somebody who can fit anyway. They, they, they cannot afford to lose you around you. And like some people say, I can't wait to finish this shift because the person I'm partner with, my goodness, is just an evil one. Because that's what it is. Hallelujah. When you don't have love, what you see in people is different. But this morning, I'm talking to you. God is saying, I've not given you the spirit of fear. Fear makes you do some wrong judgments. Hallelujah. Wrong decisions. But he said, fear, I've given you the love, power, and sound mind. Sound mind, that means everything you do is reasonable. You are somebody well-controlled and well-composed. Because in fear, I've always given an, an illustration of a lion. A lion we think it's a very powerful creature. It can lift up a buffalo and throw it somewhere there. No, not that because a lion is too powerful. A lion uses fear. Hallelujah. When it roars, the whole bush and everything start all of the intestines. I've heard it at one point. When it rolls in the bush in the village where I grew up, all the intestines, my tomb, anotanga kutamba, then what do you do? You start to panic. That's why they go to, the, to a herd of animals, whatever, of beasts. And it isolates because every time when brrr, happens, little ones, they start flocking and do. Then the lion picks up one and bang, you are gone. Fear, dangerous in the name of Jesus. So when you've got fear, just tell them, you know what? I'm not afraid because I'm not on my own. God has got my back. Hallelujah. And do you know what? I just need to just finish here. 
But whatever we can be, the power is in our confession. The power is in our speaking, praying the promises. You could be going in one of these categories I've given you. Please pick up. Go back and replay this podcast again until you get something out of it. Hallelujah. Those who told you can. That's why Numbers chapter number is I close because I, I can close. It's too much here. Okay. Let me do the last one. Okay. That can be the last one. Number five before I close. It says, when your journey of becomes tiring and weary, what do you do? Hallelujah. When your journey becomes tiring and weary, please let me make this one the last one, number five. You know what? This is Psalms 138, verse number seven and eight. It says, hallelujah, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you revive me. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of the enemy, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect which that concerns me. Your mess, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hand. My goodness, what a way to close up our service. Hallelujah. That's the promise when you are getting tired of life. The gen, you are now looking lousy. You are getting wrinkled up with life because you don't see any light at the end of the tunnel. The Lord is says, I am your God. Although you are walking in times of trouble, in the pandemic, he said he comes and revives you. Revival, revival. We are in the times of being revived. You cannot revive anything that is already got life. You revive something that looks it's dead. You look like you are dying, but let me tell you, revival. God is saying today, call upon the revival spirit to come into your house. He said, I'll revive you. Revive. I love it. Oh, that's powerful. And you'll stretch out. Hey, you stretch out your hand. You are knowing that God is stretching out his hand. You are somewhere where he's stretching. You can't stretch to anything. What are you reaching? When you're stretching, you are reaching out to something. Every time the word stretch, that means you are not doing it in the comfort. You are stretching to grab something, to rescue something, to pick something. It doesn't come to you. God is saying, I'm coming in that moment when you are not coming out to stretch my hand to pick you up. Hallelujah. In the hand against the wraith. I know witches are real. Enemies are real. Oh, yes, left, right, and center. Oh. Oh. But then, God, this is the promises we have. But one thing, listen to this. He said, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Ah, that's a good one. The Lord will perfect which that concerns you. Please. Break yourself this morning and say, hey, 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 ah, devil, I wish, I thank God for Pastor John because you know what, he brings this as life as it is, that you know what, he is perfecting it. Yes, there are some errors that you've done, but he says, I'm going to perfect it. Please, you don't need to be thinking I am perfect. You are not perfect on your own. The Lord is promising that I am coming to your house and perfect your marriage and perfect your health and perfect your finances and perfect your Christian walk with me. It's not about you. And unless we break the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, he said, Except by his faith, not by our deeds and whatever we might think we can, so that no one boost and all break. In Jesus' mighty name, so to, this morning, I thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Honestly, it's going on and on. I don't have time to go there. Please, just forgive Pastor John. I would have wanted to go far, but let me just leave it there. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to pray for somebody this morning before even we take our communion. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray with somebody. Oh, in the midst. You know, thinking they are on it, they are on, they are finished, they've come. Please go back and remind of yourself of the promises of God. Hallelujah. He has promised, these promises go back into time into our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why they are the people of the promise. And this is where we have the lineage we find. I'm telling you, child of God, please go back to your present worship. Just forget about what's happening. Go back to your reading and say, Oh yes, I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. Yes, Lord, I believe. That's all you need to do. Because you only sing your blessings. Because that's what he says. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I am the head, not the tail. Beneath, not be. You know what? Hallelujah. Not behind. I am just above. This is how the promises of God, child of God. Hallelujah. It's going to work. Yes, you are a good father. You are a good mother. Yes, you are a good leader. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. Yes. So many things happen, but God is at work. He said, I'm perfecting, which concerns you. You, not anybody, which concerns you. Perfecting. When you are perfecting, there are some, you know what? There's some room for error. That means he's coming to perfect it. He's only the perfecter. He can only perfect. Hallelujah. So this morning, I say, God bless you. As I'm going to pray for somebody. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for every individual at the sound of my voice. For some people who have gone tired, they want to quit marriage. They want to quit their jobs. They want to quit some who are on the suicidal mission, killing themselves because of this journey, which has become an endless. We can, some can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's one issue after another. But you've given me this message to pray and give to them that they can go back into the promises that you've given to your children. Father, in the name of Jesus. We find them in the name of Jesus. We find them in the Lord. In reading of the word of God, in our prayer, I pray that you revive them right now. You revive our sister. Revive our brother. Revive our children. Every generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed because healing belongs to you. You are not a God that lies. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you praise and honor. Thank you for reviving your church today. Father, there are so many that we cannot reach at this particular time. But as we are coming in, in this congregation, in this day, we are praying for them. Elderly. Father, those who are disinfra, disconnected, who are losing home. Our generation that is under depression. Father, under stress, under anxiety. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every spirit of anxiety, stress, disorder. In the name of Jesus, you go. Leave this nation. Leave is the people of God in the name of Jesus Lord we are still on the promises because you are God Almighty you said I know the plans we are in your plan father we thank you for your care we thank you for your love we thank you for the hedge of fire around us in Jesus mighty name amen and amen shall we just uh, go straight into our communion together please if you're watching us for the first time just take even a biscuit or a cup of water if you don't have juice. You know, you could be watching from a village where probably no mazo we know what. But never mind, you can still take some water. Please, because what we are doing here is stuff. Hallelujah. This is what can actually tell us who we are and whose we are. So this morning and this afternoon, I want to say thank you. As we are going to take, can you hold your bread right now? We are going to read the word of God from the book. Uh, of you know, First Corinthians chapter number 11, 23 to 26 says, For I have received of the Lord, of which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and, and he said, Take it, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In Jesus' mighty name, it's broken for you. In Jesus' mighty name, this, this you do in remembrance of me. Can you say this after me? Right. Thank you, Father. For the gift of your son. For the gift of your son. By, the By the stripes that fell on, on his back, my body, my body is, healed is healed from the crown, from the crown of, my of my head to the very sole of my feet. On my feet. Every, cell, every cell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every, cell, every, cell, every cell. Every cell. Every cell. Repeat that one. Every cell. Every, cell, every, organ, every organ. Wherever you are feeling pain, I say please touch it right now. Every organ, every, organ every, function every function of my body, of my body is, healed is healed and restored, and restored in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. I am renewed, I, am renewed, I believe, and I, believe and, I receive. and I receive. Let us take together. Hallelujah. As you hold your cup, which represents the blood of Jesus, please. This is something so profound and special. It says verse number 25. After the seminar, he also took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new covenant in, the, in my blood. This you do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show 
There's something, children of God, we need to continually show that we are of God. You cannot afford to be in between. Show. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this, can you say this after me? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood. Thank you for the precious blood. You're sin free. You're sin free. Disease, free. Disease free. Poverty free. Poverty free. Oh, life is in your blood. Life is in your blood. And your shed blood, and your shed blood has, removed has removed every sin, every sin from, my life. from my life. Through your blood, Through your blood I'm forgiven, I am forgiven of my sins. Of my sins. Past. Past, present, present and, future, and future and I'm made, made complete righteous, righteous. Today, today I celebrate, I celebrate partake, partake of, the of the inheritance of righteousness, of righteousness which is, is privation healing wholeness and provision thank you Lord Jesus, thank thank you, Lord Jesus for loving me, for loving me. Amen. amen let's all drink together Father, I want to thank you for everybody right now who has partook of this communion. Some are sick. Some are even participating in this service in bed, in pain. Some in hospitals. Some in depression. Father, but I thank you for touching them, for healing them, for restoring them. For strengthening them. This is where we find our strength. You are our source of strength. That's why we continually stand. Because in your blood, Lord, we find there is a new covenant. I'm no longer under the blood of the ancestors. But the blood, not the blood of bulls and goats. But the blood of Jesus. Which carries the new covenant. I mean the new covenant. Through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. And give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. May the church of God say amen. amen. Uh, let me just thank God for your life as I share grace with you this afternoon. I thank God for being part of all this. Let us all share grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit live and abide with us now and forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever let the church of god say amen, amen. you are an amazing people i love you so much i love you so much your prayers are makes things happening for me to continually stand well over seven months standing consistently never changed because of your support because of your prayers and your encouragement God bless you, children of God. Have a lovely weekend in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Shalom.